then all I'll need to do is to hit this particular admin menu item. I'm clicking it, on our phone we'll get a message to pay and we'll also receive an SMS message that is showing us that we need to make that payment and if we make that payment then that message will be stored and we'll be able to see what actually happens at the end of the day. So our API is working, all the variables that we need are actually showing off. So then we are ready to have this particular part of our API integrated inside our WooCommerce our payment gateway. So what I'm going to do is actually just pick everything as it is here and then I am going to take it into our Paleo uh, payment gateway. I'll just remove this from here right now and then I am going to go all the way down to our gateway. Uh, we need to find our payments process, our process payment function and we know that we're going to apply to the payments processing here. So whenever our value is actually greater than zero, then we run this function. But from this API, I've realized that you actually need to have a value that is above 1000 shilling. But for now, we'll leave it at zero, and then I allow this to actually run. So I'm going to paste everything here, and then from that point on, we shall be able to make it dynamic, basing on the information that is coming from our WooCommerce order. So let's save this here and then we are going to start off to make this all dynamic. So I'll just click to reduce all these functions so that it's a very short distance going back and forth here. So we realize that um, there are a couple of things that we're going to need to add in our payment uh, settings. For example, we don't always change our API key and our widget key, so we're going to have to make some forms for them here. I'm going to duplicate this, let me just duplicate the description which is going to be easy, so description, I'll call this an API key, so we'll have that and then I'll duplicate also the API key so that we can have our widget ID. Uh, space this out to make it even, so we have that working, we don't have a problem with that. So I'm also going to set these same um, pieces uh, down here, I'll copy these, paste them down here, and then for our API key, I'm just going to add a message that says this is our API key, so I'll copy this, add it here, and say add API key, and then I'll do the same thing here, and then I'll say add widget key add widget ID. So we have these incorporated, the next thing that we need to do is actually add them here. So I'll duplicate this twice and then we'll have this as API key and then this will be widget ID. So we need to backspace this so that we keep everything nice and neat when we need to see it. And then in here of course we'll change this and say add widget ID, so we'll call this a widget ID, that's the title, we'll call this API key, and then we just need to change all this information, add your widget key, uh, of course here we'll just say API key, and then we'll take out the defaults because we don't have any default keys that will be applied at that point. So I'll save this and then come back to our payment gateway, of course we now need to go to the settings and see how that looks like, and if we go to payments, you don't have any errors, that's a good thing here, it shows that we've done everything properly, and then we now have the new field for the API key, if we click we, we see it tells us what to do, and then we have also the widget ID already here. So what I'm going to do, instead of having this uh, looking at me at the bottom, let me close this off, uh, I'll just save this, so instead of having this uh, just thrown here, I'm just going to copy this and then save them in our database so that we can always just pick them uh, from there. Copy this also as well and paste them here and save changes. When I save that, you can see that they are stored, I can change them and save the settings again. So that's covered, so what we're going to do is actually just come and take this away and this. So instead of having this generated here, I'm going to do this dash greater than symbol and then put API key, that will automatically fetch it, I'm going to get that and then also paste here, instead of a API key this time it will be the widget key, so we have this information that will be dynamically needed to be added here. Um, the next thing that we need to do is get our phone number, we've been, we had the phone number already sorted for us inside our payment, when you look at the payment checkout we already have this post payment number 
as this. So I just need to get the same thing here, copy it, and then come back here and change it to that so that we'll have dynamic information always coming in from our form. So the only thing that I need to do is because I'm sending this to our API, we need to cleanse it, we need to sanitize it. So I'll use our escape attribute, A-T-T-R, I usually read as attribute, uh, but it escapes this and makes it uh, clean for our API to receive. But we can do more sanitization and validation to make sure that this is as it's supposed to be. And then, for this particular part, we're going to need the order amount. So I'm going to check our function here, which we have here. We already have the order ID here. Uh, we just need to get this order total. And when we get this order total, I'm going to pass it inside this argument here. And then after passing this here, we need to also receive it here. So I'll just call it total. When we receive it here, we shall just call it total. So I'll copy this and then I'll say amount is equal to total. So instead of saving it as a variable here, I'll just quickly go in this piece that we set up here and I'll just change it to total there. So we no longer need that amount coming in there. So for now, we can also change the API key and do the right thing. So API key, change it here, and then our widget key, we'll copy it and also paste it here so that we don't need these pieces. We are reducing our code and making it a lot neater, cleaner. So the phone number, we can also just get it from here. But since we are sanitizing it and running it, let's just leave it here. So what we are going to do at this point is let's just try to run our function, see what it says, and then at the end of this we are going to actually just kill whatever it is or just print out whatever response that we do get. Uh, we'll also be looking out to see what comes on our mobile. So I'm going to go back to our order. Our order is just 300 shillings, it won't work for us, so I'll go back to our shop, I'll add a couple of items, and then after that, I'll go to view, we'll come in, we'll fill in our form. You can even use this phone number if you want to. Since we have a tutu here, I'm going to choose a paleo mobile payments. I'll put in my number, and then we'll take this out and just validate this number to make sure everything is working out well. And when I click place order, our order says it has been uh, carried out, but we seem to be having an error at this particular point. So I'm going to just place die here so that after we've ordered everything actually just sticks and then we don't go any further than that point. First things first, let's first comment this out and then let's us first dump what we have here which is our URL. So get this URL to make sure that everything is actually working out well. Uh, so we'll va dump it. Let's just go and try to make our order. So we'll place a couple of things here. Go to our view cut. Then we have our order of one six. We we'll put in our number five six blah blah blah, and make sure that it's the right one. So I'll just open my uh, audit of this, and I'm ready. Place the order. We have called our Ajax here. We are seeing what we have, and I know it breaks because we have a va dump in there. But if we look at our URL, we have this coming out well. We have, of course, our API key working out well. We don't have our widget, so we know that's not going to work. But we have our phone number coming out well. We have our amount is missing. We don't have a comp a, the company mobile is okay. The reason is actually okay. So we need to get two things. We need to get the widget ID to work. We also need to get our amount to show up here. So. First things first is a widget key does not exist because what we have here is actually widget ID. So I need to come back down here and make that correct. And then the other thing that we didn't have was the amount. The amount, uh, we're going to get the order here. So for my reason, I am just going to get the order ID and say payment for order ID. So we'll just change this here. And say our reason is order ID. We're going to just chain on one thing in brackets, chain that on. So payment for order that, and then we'll chain on our ID. That will be our reason. So we need to also get the payment uh, total. So in here we shall pass in the order that we get, and then we shall filter to get the order total from this point. So order here. Let's see if we get the order total. So total will equal to the order 
and then we shall get our total on that get total do that so you can also decide to var dump this see what happens copy this that let's see what happens so we'll go back to our order reload this come back down feed in our value because it will break everything look at our console place our order look at our http request we now have our api key we have our widget key we have our phone, we have our amount, which is really good. However, it has two dots on it. Uh, I probably don't want the two dots on it, so I could sanitize it to be different. But we can also see here that we have dumped it as zero, zero here. So for my case, I'm going to actually make this an integer. So it will have to remove all the other pieces uh, on it. So I'll make this int val and then I'll have this as int val, but since it's working out well, I'm just going to allow it to actually go to our API for the first time and let's see what we actually get. So I'm going to go back, reload this. We have our order, which is our order, which is over 1600. It's better than uh, what we required. The API, place the order, look at our Ajax going. We have our request on our phone to pay and our sms has come to pay and then the api is just waiting to get a signal from our side to see if we have made a payment so if i make my payment and it is approved i have a payment of 16 here on my phone you can see that and then of course we have an error showing up on this side but we now know that we in our api if you look at this this payment has been successful we'll see that we get back a response a message which is saying thank you this was successful we have all this in our our content so i'm going to copy this and then we'll filter it to make it possible to say if this response that we get was successful then this is what we should do uh, maybe we should change our order status to payments have been made uh, if it fails then we say the order status should be payments are pending so i'm just going to dump all of this here the reason why it failed to complete to have this is because we left die inside our function so i'm going to take this out and then i'm going to add our code that we get here it's not the best thing to do probably we just want to get the message that we get here we also need to know the response which is a 200 the code is 200 and then that will be uh, all we need to have so i'll just undo this and just have this inside the notepad to make it easy for us to follow along so i'll just paste all this information here and then we're going to get a couple of things so First and foremost, we have to get the response code and see if it's 200, then we go. If it's not 200, then we fail the whole process. We just say, you know what, the payment has actually failed. So we're going to use a couple of things that come by default to WordPress. And that is things like the response. We're going to use the, the, the WP remote get remote retrieve body. That is one. Then we're also going to get the remote retrieve code and we shall get it from here so everything else will work out if it's an error we do that and then we return if that's the error otherwise let's go the step below lower and what we are going to say if 200 which means that it is okay we'll first start off if it's not 200 if our remote response code is not 200 then that means we have a problem so we need to return and say we have an error so we return and that will automatically show our payment gateway that there is actually an issue so we can even decide to echo what the problem is and then just throw it off so i'll just copy this and then save this course we need to close this properly that's why we're having that error so that's the first fail if everything works out actually if it's not 200 this is how it should be not like this if it's not 200 then we should fail please note that this is just an exclamation mark and two equal signs but because i'm using font leakages it adds them all together to actually give us that piece so I'll take this out. So if it's not 200, then we have an issue. Let's return. We can even return this message right here and save some space. Eh, not much, it's negligible, but that is it. So we'll copy this and just do the same thing, save here. Then if it is successful, I'll just make it really uh, typed to show that 
it is the issue, but we don't to have that. So I'll copy this if it's 200 and it right, so we just need to add three equal signs that if that is the case for us, then what we are going to do is we are going to get the remote retrieved to also make sure that everything worked out well. So we can also come in here and say if the remote retrieve body is saying blah blah blah, then that it was okay. So the body is going to have the message. It can also return the metadata. If you look at the metadata here, it can return it because our API told us if you want to have any other information coming back, you should write metadata. So we can always pass that along if we want it, but for my case, probably not. So if this field of body, if our body has this message, so we are going to chain on this message here. So if we remote retrieve body and we're going to get we're going to chain on the message, that's what we need to get. If the message, this message that we're getting here is actually equal to, it's a string, so we can even equate it to that and say if it is equal to thank you, blah blah blah, successful. I uh, will do this Yoda style to make it work out. So if it is that, then that means three equal signs. If that is that, so let's first uh, escape, let's first get this and say, this is our response body, so response body equal to this part, and then we're going to say we're going to look for one part there, we're getting body. If this is what we are looking for, so if, if this is what we are looking for, then what we're going to do is actually uh, come here and say it was cleared, so the order is complete, so order payment is complete. Uh, if it's like all the other cases up there, then we are going to, instead of just returning, we shall just say pen, pay, pending payment, so we shall use what we had here, so we just say the order is actually pending payment, it's invoice pending payment, and then we shall also do the same thing here, there is an error, so we can sort of record, if we want we can record the order or we can just decide to fail it completely. So in this case I will uh, just say it's pending payment and then here I will pass it and then we'll clean out all these parts. So for this point I'll save this and then we're just going to try one more order, pay it. First of all we shall fail it, we shall refuse to pay, see whether it goes in pending payments and then afterwards we shall also order to see if it actually passes. So let's just do that and see what happens. So I'm going to go back, come back, let's make some new orders. Uh, I'll just var dump this, I'm not so sure of what we're going to be having here. I'll just var dump it so that we can see what goes on in there and then we can <coughs> work according to it accordingly. So I'll var dump that, uh, let's see what happens. So go back to our shop, we'll go to our shop, uh, make some orders, two pieces, this is 1000, go to the view cart, everything is working out well, we fill out our order, this is 2.6, means so much item, let me just, I need to go to the cart, edit my cart, uh, remove a few things, that, take out that, uh, make these two, update cart, and then proceed to pay out. Our order details are filled in, we have that, I'll put two six, fill that in, place our order, let's see what our Ajax gives us, what our response is, we have that showing up, we are failing it for the first time, let's see the response that we get, we have failed it, just waiting for it to time out, come back, tell us, just waiting for a few seconds, 45 to be exact. So we got a response back, uh, cleared the order, that is a problem in our code here, we need to check uh, why it clears. The order is received, let's go to the back end and see how that appears. So it goes to pending payments, which is really good and clears the order. It's pending payment, but now we need to check uh, when we actually pay for the commodities. So let's go back and then see uh, what happens when you actually pay for the commodities. So shop, let's go to the shop, uh, get our 500, another go to pay, go to review that, our mobile payments, two five, blah, blah, blah. This time around, we're actually going to pay the order. So let's go, wait, see what comes. We'll wait to see our response, so waiting for our API, comes, we get the message, we are now paying, and then replying, F payments are done, we've approved the payments, and then we get our order back, 
we see our act response gives us it's cleaned out this is doing so well let's go in the back end look at the orders and it's pending payment so we just need to see if we have an error in terms of uh, what the way we receive this object it's supposed to we're not supposed to chain it but rather we're supposed to get the message like this so we'll paste our message like that same thing for this so i'll just copy this then paste it here to see what kind of message we get save this uh, let's try it again um, don't get tired of losing some money that's why we have sandboxes to help us fix all of this so i'll pay this to the shop go pay for a few items i'll go to the cart preview it and then i'll make my payments 256 blah 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 uh, come to place the order and now we are waiting for the order see what comes back in our response we're going to pay put in our code message has come reply positively the key is working out well our order is received let's go let's come back to our orders in the back end so when we come back to our orders we actually see that this is processing so our payments are actually going through and this is working out well so try it out on your api see how you handle your data let me know if your processing is working out well try it out uh, don't fail when you get some errors Keep trying over and over and over again, depending on the response that you get on your API. So our API is actually processing, it is in good shape, and we are having what needs to be done. So thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe because we have more interesting things coming up for you.